this week we'll start a discussion of what it is to be an athletic trainer. Over the next few weeks, we will be discussing multiple aspects of the field of athletic training and the roles and responsibilities of being a healthcare provider. Over the next few slides, we will discuss how the field of athletic training developed and how it has progressed over the years. So what is athletic training? The NATA, or the National Athletic Trainers Association, which is the professional membership associated for certified athletic trainers, so the main governing body of athletic training, if you will, describe athletic training as the prevention, examination, diagnosis, treatment, and rehabilitation of emergent, acute, or chronic injuries and medical conditions. This leads us to the next question of what is an athletic trainer? The NATA describes athletic trainers as healthcare providers who collaborate with physicians to provide preventative services, emergency care, clinical diagnosis, therapeutic intervention, and rehabilitation of injuries and medical conditions. Given this description, athletic trainers could be, should be considered the hub of the medical field, especially for the athletic, po athletic population. Athletic trainers are the first on the scene, whether it be on the field or in the athletic training facility. Where did this all begin? How did this all begin? How did athletic training evolve? Well, I'm glad you asked. Athletic trainers can be seen all the way back to the Grecian days, but as years continued, athletic trainers or trainers as they were called in those days were usually coaches or teachers or both that were more concerned with the health and well-being of the athletes that they were had in front of them. There have been many people instrumental to the field of athletic training, the Kramer family for the development of Kramer products in the treatment of athletic injuries, a physician by the name of S.E. Billick who wrote the first major text on athletic training, which was called the Trainer's Bible. Yes, that is its real name. But it wasn't until the late 1930s that the true formation of athletic training began. At this time, a small group of athletic trainers made a real effort to establish an organization to protect and establish the field of athletic training. This organization was the NATA, the main governing body I discussed earlier. The first former athletic training conference was held in Missouri with 101 athletic trainers from all over the country and the maturation of the NATA became real and the beginning of the establishment of professional standards occurred. After 1950, the growth of the athletic training profession has been remarkable. In 1974, when the NATA membership numbers were first tracked, there were 4,500 members. Today, those numbers have grown to more than 42,000 members. Certified athletic trainers can be found internationally, with more than 500 working in 25 countries outside of the U.S., the majority of these being in Japan and in Canada. As the athletic training profession has grown and evolved over the last 50 plus years, many positive milestones have occurred that have collectively shaped the future direction of the profession, including the establishment of a certification exam, recognition of athletic trainers as healthcare providers, increased diversity of practice settings, which we will get into in a few weeks, the passage of practice acts that regulate athletic trainers in most states and protect jobs, third-party reimbursement for athletic training services, meaning that any service we provide to any patient we can get reimbursed for, so more money, and an ongoing re-evaluation, revision, and reform of athletic training education programs, which again, we will come back to soon. The origins of athletic training are in collegiate or secondary school athletics. When people think of athletic trainers, they think of college, university, or high school patient populations. Today, athletic trainers can be found in a variety of settings, and this has forced change in the role of the athletic trainer into one that is more aligned with that of a healthcare provider. We aren't the coaches that know how to tape anymore. More than 40% of certified athletic trainers are employed in clinics, hospitals, or industrial and occupational settings, such as Boeing, Mercedes, Kia, etc. Working under the direction of physician as, as athletic trainers in physician practice. Although many athletic trainers continue to work in colleges, universities, and secondary schools, others can be found working as healthcare providers in hospitals, professional sports, including rodeo and NASCAR, industrial settings, performing arts, the entertainment industry, medical equipment sales and support, the military, law enforcement, 
governmental agencies such as the FBI, the Senate, the Pentagon, NASA, etc. The expansion in employment has forced the profession to change not only the methods by which we practice, but also the education that is given. You, as a hopefully soon to be athletic training student, are going to learn the newest up and coming material for the field of athletic training. With this new education, we will become the better, more well rounded athletic training practitioners. Certainly, athletic trainers continue to work with athletes. Given these changes, it has been suggested that more appropriate term to use when treating an athlete who sustains an injury should be called a patient or a client. You will hear me use those words interchangeably throughout the course of this class. So, with this information, we can summarize that the history of athletic training is relatively young as compared to other healthcare providers. There have been many changes throughout the years, and the profession continues to change every single day but one thing will remain the same. This is a profession of caring individuals and practitioners that will continue to provide the best healthcare possible to everyone. And hopefully you will be one of them real soon.